Hi everyone, it's Lindy on here from Pink Whisper Designs. Today we're going to make this fun little farm animals card. So let's go ahead and get started. So these are the little critters here, and these are freebies. So if you make a $30 purchase with Art Impressions right now, you get one free stamp, and you can choose the stamp that you want. So they're kind of fun to play with, and I thought I would do a card with these today. So here's the little farm pig, the little lamb, this cute little cat, you get the little cow, and the hen, and then the last one is an owl, and we're not going to be using that one today, but hopefully I'll use that on another project at some point. So for cardstock, I'm using the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100 pound cardstock. I've gone ahead and placed that in my Misty stamp positioner. And I'm also going to take the little fence from this set. This is this cute little barnyard animal cubby set, also from Art Impressions. And again, we're going to grab that little fence, and I'll be stamping quite a few of those. I'm inking up my stamps using the Versafine Onyx Black Ink. This is a permanent black ink. So this won't bleed or smear when we do our coloring because we're going, we're going to be using a water-based product to do our coloring. So I went ahead and stamped those, again, several of the little fences. And I'm using the Platinum Brown. These are the Zig Clean Color Real Brush pens and the Blender pen to do my coloring. So I'm going to just add a little color to the side of each of those posts and then pull that over. For this little pig, I'm using the Pink Flamingo and I'm adding a little bit sort of down towards the bottom and anywhere there might be a little bit of a shadow here. And then I'll just pull that up towards the top, keeping the top part the lightest. You will see later on though, I thought he needed a little more shadowing, so I, I will later on add a little bit of gray here. So then I added a little pink, a little more of a pinky color to the cheeks. And I'm using the light carmine to do that. So I just added a little color to the cheeks. And then for the snout, I'm using the beige. To color in the little lamb, I'm going to be using platinum brown and light gray. So I'll start with the platinum brown. And I'm also, again, going back to that pink flamingo for the cheeks. So I'll just add a little bit, and I'll be using that color for pretty much all of these little animals for the cheeks and for the ears. So I like to use a circular motion when I'm doing the fur. It just gives it a little bit more of that furry look. So I'm just kind of pulling up towards the top. Then I'll add a little bit more of that pink to the ears. And now I'll switch to that light gray uh, for the center of the face. So I'm going to blend out that platinum brown, and here I'm bringing in a little bit of the light gray. And I'll use that on the center of the face and then down towards the bottom of his legs there. And right here's where I came back in with that light gray, just to add a little bit more of a shadow here. I'm just adding a little touch of that light gray. Now for the cat, I'm going to be using black. And a little bit of the black goes a long way. So you just want to add a little tiny bit of it along that edge and then kind of pull in towards the center. And then I'll do the same thing on the other side there. If you get too much ink on your blender pen, you can always scribble it off onto some scrap paper and then continue your coloring. And you can also remove ink that same way. You just pick up ink off your uh, image and scribble that onto your scrap paper. So these zig pens are very forgiving. I'm going to keep his face fairly light. And what I'm doing here is just taking some of that excess color on the tail and bringing it up towards his face there.
And again, adding a little pink to the ears here. So now with pink flamingo, mid-brown, and beige, I'm going to color in the little cow. I'm starting with the beige. And then I'll come in with that mid-brown, just where those shadows might be. And I've already added the pink to the cheeks and to the ears. Sometimes I like to do that first because I'm always afraid I'm going to forget. So I added that, and then you can blend that in once you get up here to the face. You can just gently blend that in. Now with cobalt blue and brown, I'll color in the bell, the little cowbell, the brown, and then I'll use that blue on the ribbon. And that'll tie into the sky color that we're going to be using a little bit later on. So with mustard, light brown, and deep red, I'll color in this little hen. For the red, I'll just add a little bit here and then pull that down just to create a little shadow right up under the chin there. And then at the top, I'll add it at the base and then pull up towards the top. And then I'm using that light brown here for the, the body of the hen. Again, keeping that top part the lightest and coming back in here and adding a few more shadows. Now you could choose a second color here to add your shadows, but I just decided to add a little bit more of this same color. So that's another way of doing your blending as well. And then for this section, I'm using the mustard. And the colors aren't too, too different, but it was just subtle enough to make a change between those two sections of his body. And then coming back in with a little bit of that pink for the cheeks. So that barnyard cubby set has a little die that coordinates with those fences. So I'm going to cut those out. And for the rest of these pieces, there are no dies available. So I'm just going to use my detail scissors and leave a little tiny border all the way around those. So I'll cut those out off camera. So now that those are all set, you can see how cute these are. Well, I'm using the Lawn Fawn Critters on the Farm set, and I wanted to create some little bales of hay. So I'm grabbing the stamp and the coordinating die. And I did want to show you this cute little watercolor travel box that Art Impressions has. You get three acrylic blocks, and those are uh, three inches, one and a half inches, and one inch. And I love having all different shapes and sizes of these blocks. It makes it a lot easier to do your projects. And then you also get that watercolor palette as well. And it comes in this nice handy little travel box. So I'm going to grab that uh, acrylic block and place that bale of hay on there. And then I'll just stamp a whole bunch of these. I'm going to stamp eight of them, but I think in the end I only use seven of these. So I'm using, again, the Strathmore Bristol Smooth 100-pound cardstock to do my stamping and the VersaFine Onyx Black ink. 
I'll use mid-brown and beige to color in the hay. I'm starting with that lighter brown, adding a little bit more of this darker one, and then I'll kind of pull that from left to right. And then once that's done, I'm coming in with that darker brown right along the bottom and I'll just pull that up a little bit just to give a little shadow at the bottom of each of these. So I did that same thing for all of these. I attached the coordinating die and I ran those through the Sizzix Sidekick machine. So I did the rest of those off camera. And you can see those there. So now I'm taking the largest rectangle from the rectangle A2 double stitch dies. You can see it creates that beautiful stitched edge. And these are from Art Impressions. And then I've got this We Are Memory Keepers silicone mat. This is a non-stick silicone mat and apparently you can apply high heat, glue and paint and everything easily removes. So I thought I'd give it a try on camera and see what we think of it. But I put the paper down and that almost just kind of stuck into place. It, it just kind of grabbed the paper there. So I'm hoping that will work to hold things down while you're working on it. And I also noticed that when you put your ink pads down on it, they don't slide around like they normally do on my glass media mat. So let's give it a try. I've applied some uh, purple tape here on this panel and I've marked it at the two inch mark here. So I'm going to be doing the, uh, the grass at the bottom here. We're going to start, though, with gathered twigs and brushed corduroy. With the brushed corduroy, I'm going to apply a little area of like dirt, and then we'll transition into the grass. And I'm not too worried about that transition down here at the bottom. And there again, you can see that those uh, ink pads are kind of being held in place there with this silicone mat. So again, I'll keep trying it and see what we think of it. So there I've added a little shadow. Now I'm going to go to the two green colors to add my grass. So I've got Twisted Citron and Mowed Lawn. And again, I'm just going to kind of transition into that. I'll add that Twisted Citron all the way up to that purple tape. And then I'll come with the mowed lawn, just kind of down from that tape and create a little shadow right along this horizon line here. And I'm just using the Picket Fence Studio brushes to do my blending. And I will list all of these supplies down below and on my blog as well. So now we can remove that purple tape. I'm going to wipe it down so I can use it again and I don't want to transfer any of that color onto the top section here. So I will heat set this because if I don't, my purple tape won't stick. So you do want to heat set this or let it air dry. And again, I'm testing out this silicone mat and I didn't see any kind of bubbling or anything. And then I spritzed it with a little bit of water to clean off that paint and it came right off. So, so far I really like how this is working. So now I'll apply that purple tape down towards the bottom here. And you want to leave a little tiny bit of that green showing, just a little, little hair of it showing, just so that you don't have a white line in there in the middle. You want a tiny bit of overlap. So now with the salvage patina and the peacock feathers, I'm going to add a little bit of the sky here. So I'm going to start off with that peacock feathers. Again, keeping it the darkest right along the horizon line here. And then I'll go to that salvage patina, which is a newer color. And I thought these two really blended together really nicely. Just gives you a little bit of contrast here. And I don't want to completely fill in the sky. I kind of want to leave it a little bit blotchy, the look of clouds a little bit. So now I can go ahead and remove that purple tape. And then I did heat set that one more time. 
So now with this set here, I'm going to be using the hay. And this is from the Art Impressions Animal Nativity set. So I'll also go back to the Gathered Twigs ink pad here, and we'll stamp this, but I'm going to just do some double and triple stamping. I just want to give the illusion that there's a little bit of hay on the ground here. So I'm just stamping it two or three times. And then I'm going back to this Barnyard Cubby set, and I'm going to take that sentiment that says hay there. And we'll stamp that right up at the top here in the center. I'll go back to that VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and I will stamp this a couple of times just to get a nice black image. So now I've got a top folding card. This measures four and a quarter by five and a half. And that panel is going to sit right on top. So I've got my Nouveau Deluxe Adhesive. I've applied that all over the back, and I'll attach these two together. And then I'll use my We Are Memory Keepers Bone Folder just to press that out. So now we can start adding our little pieces. I'm going to start off with the fence, and I'll place that right along that horizon line. I'm going to leave a little gap here for my cow so he can come through the fence there. And then I'll go ahead and attach the rest of these. Now for these, you could just um, line them up side by side or you can cut away one of the fence posts and then glue them together. I just decided to overlap them. So I'm just gonna overlap those fence posts together here and just put them in a straight line. And I did that all the way across. That one's going to be hanging over, but we'll cut that off here in a second. I'm just going to let that dry. Now I'll add some scotch fo foam mounting tape to the little cow and pop him up in the back here. And then we'll cut away that excess Now I've laid out all the little bales of hay, and again, I'll just have this one go over the edge a little bit, and we'll cut that away. And I'm just trying to create a little place for this little piggy to take a nap here. So he's got a nice comfy spot there. And then I'll go ahead and attach the rest of these. And then I wanted a little place for my cat to sit, so I'm going to add one, one more up on top there. So I'll pop up the little lamb. Actually, I'm going to pop up the rest of these, the hen, the lamb, and the cat as well. So I'm using that scotch foam mounting tape to do that. So let me just cut away that excess. And then I've got just a couple extra pieces there. I've got an extra fence and a bale of hay. Now I wanted to add these pretty little stars. These are from Nuvo. These are the turquoise stars. And then you've got other little cute items in this container. These are the peacock feather collection. And you get the hexagons, butterflies, and flakes, these little aqua flakes. So these are fun to play with. I'm using my Marvy Jewel Picker. I've laid out all these little stars. I thought it would be fun to have these 
kind of at dusk or a little bit of a nighttime scene, but I didn't want it to be too dark. And these add just a little bit of sparkle to the sky. So take a look at the finished card here. And again, if you want to get these little promotional critters, you just have to make a purchase of $30 and then put on your order which little critter you would like. And you get one critter with each $30 purchase. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please hit the like button and subscribe. And don't forget to visit me at pinkwhisperdesigns.com. As always, thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.